Hey Joe, um, a little bit slow in coming with this video, I apologize for that. And I'm going to do this dirty and on the fly because I don't really have a lot of time. Um, so the crossover sweep ring in T-splines you were asking about, I'm eventually going to get some time to get to it. And that mad screaming you hear in the background is my children, sometimes they're normal. Uh, Alright, now I can't find the original source image I worked from, which is something we have in stock. So I'm just going to grab the one that I've already got finished. I'll pop, I'm using a picture frame and I'll pop it down just somewhere wherever um, and pretend like the way that I normally work. Um, usually of course I'd be pulling my stones etc out of matrix in this in this case I'm working just in native Rhino sort of no helpers. I need a finger size, I'm gonna use a circle from F4, F4 being my world origin and in Windows you can assign that to an F key, something the OSX boys might want to take a hint from. Um, so the diameter, I don't know, I would go in, what are we talking about, 16.8 mil, something like that. Alright, so that's an average ladies size, well it is in Oz. So let's let's say this was my sample image I'd been given, um, which is actually the image in the background there. Um, I need to just orient it to get it the right size, so I'm going to grab that, I'm going to orient it. Whoops, orient. Uh, I want to copy it, yeah, I want to scale it, yeah, 3D, no, I don't want to copy it. So I want to go from about mm, this quad to that quad, and I want my quad snaps on, are they on? Yes, whoa, too many snaps on you, yeah, what's going on? Alright, so I've got that more or less the right size now. Um, that was quite lucky, normally you have to just nudge it around a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to edit that thing's properties, make it a little bit more translucent angle in a second. No, 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 materials. It's been a long, slow day, so just bear with me. Transparency, I'm going to set that to about 50% transparent. Ah, more. I just need it as a basic idea. So I set that to 75% transparent. Ah, a little bit more even. I'm going to go to 85. Yeah, that's ample. Right, let's close and let's lock that. Okay, so that's there just as a placeholder to show me what I need. Now, obviously, you'd have your client stones. Um, in this case, I'm going to go, oh, yay, big. Let's make some knock up stones just to pretend. I'm going to go the circle from F, whoops, see, circle from F4. How big is that going to need to be? About that size. Let's have a look. Something about yay size. Alright, so let's bring that up there. Is that big enough? No. I reckon it has to be bigger. Hey. Let's bring that down there. That looks like about where that stone's girdle would be. You're going to have to bear with me doing this a little bit dirty. Uh, so I'm going to knock up the stones while I'm about it as well. Alright, so I'm going to... Wow, well, we can't type scale 2D. Bring that and let's make a table area about there. Therefore, with copy. Apologies. So let's make that the table area, something like that. And let's grab you and pull you up there. Let's create a point object. Uh, there. Let's bring that point object A. Hey. Let's bring that point object up to the QLA. Left. And I'm only doing this just for illustration purposes so that anybody else who's watching the video doesn't know what the hell we're on about. Um, knows that we're talking about a gem. I'm just going to do a loft from you to you to you. Okay, let's cap that off. Alright, let's grab those curves and dump them in that point. Alright, so that's just our... Um, it's just a gem surface, it's looking a little bit freaky deaky. Anyway, not important. Alright, so that guy, I'm going to rotate around F4 with copy. Straight up, lock it over. Let's go about there. Let's take you and scale you in. Oops. Scale you some more. And what I like to do with these, grab it by its QLA and pull straight down. Okay, so that's about yeah, it's about there. 
Let's have a look from the top. I normally like to make these things that you don't see any stone from the top looking down. I can tell now already that that stone is not right. So scale 2D from F4. Okay, so it's just more or less idea. So that's probably pretty much what we're looking at, all right? Um, now, of course, in Matrix, you'd just pop your stones out where you need them. So in this case, I'm going to mirror the sky straight over that way. Like so. I grab those stones. I'm going to lock them into place. What we do? Um, now the actual making of the ring. Now all of this is more in the curves than anything else because we're going to use TS pipe for the entire job. But TS pipe is going to rely on you knowing what you're doing with the curves. So I'm going to grab a interp curve. I'm going to start from here and just trace my way. I don't have to be too precise about this because TS pipe is not going to give you a precise finish anyway. You're going to have to um, be a little bit liberal in in how you approach this. Okay, so that's the curve for here. Remembering that it's got to open out because it's touching the outside of this curve. We'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to Mm, you know what, I'm not going to mirror that. We'll use symmetry later to... Ah, you know what, let's go the whole log. I'm going to do it for all level of of people. What do we got over here? F10. Let's grab you and just pop you on the end there. Alright. Let's join you guys up and do a rebuild. I hate working. I know that... I know that we've got... Um, I know that we've got a TS pipe and the curve's not going to matter, but I just I can't make myself work with curves that are not rebuilt stuff with seams in it. Okay, so we've got this curve going down here. We're going to need these curves over here, which you could have just done with a regular Windows pipe command. It doesn't matter, however you used to make in your crossover. Um, the one we need to concentrate on is going to be this guy, because it's going to create the crux of our shape for us. These over here are just toruses with edges put in. Um, I'm going to concentrate on getting the hard work done. So, um, I don't have the, the 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 image of this ring to show you, but essentially what's happening over here um, for the non-jewelers is there's a bezel that travels underneath here, which is this section. And then there's this claw that comes up around the stone over there. Okay, so if I turn on the edit points for that guy, let's open this full screen, I can tell that I've got way too many edit points happening inside there. I'm going to rebuild this curve downwards. Uh, and see how many I can get away with. Again, odd numbers so that I can retain. Uh, let's go down some more. 15. More. 13. To the lowest amount I think I can get away with. 13. Wow, I'm getting, I reckon I can even get away with 11. Mm, starting to get a bit mucky now. I'm going to go back to 13. Okay. Alright. So now when I turn the edit points on for this sucker, I've got less guys that I have to worry about working with. So I'm going to grab these guys. Okay. Now I come in this viewport. I'm going to drag them out so that essentially the claw would be coming up over the edge of the stone here. Alright. Hmm. I'm going to control Z that. I'm going to first move the entire thing out a bit because of course we're going to have width of the shank. And then we're going to have that. So let's now turn the other points on. Grab those. Control and Alt and the left key. Grab just the top one. Control and Alt and the left arrow key. Mm. Just till you get a nice even shape. No need to be too pedantic now because you can poke around with the CNT splines later. Okay, so in your mind's eye for the jewelers, you need to allow whatever your thickness of your claw is going to be for obviously coming up over the stone. So, looking at that, uh, you know what, I'll muck around with it after it's a TS pipe. I've got a feeling that these guys need to be spread further apart to touch onto those stones. Okay, I'm not going to be too pedantic. Um, Alright, so that sort of shape is what I'm after. So, that's great. I'm going to take this guy and we're going to start splining TS pipe. 
Ugh, that's really fat. Now what I'm after is I'm going to keep the fat area here and I want to gradually slope down to a thin point over there. So I'm going to add some handles at about here. I think. Hmm. I'm going to add some tree that will even out and then I'm going to add one here. Alright. Then I'm going to come back into these guys and I'm going to pull that down to the radius currently is 1. I'm going to pull it to 0 0.6. There, yeah, it's looking good to me. And then the same over here 0 0.6. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this guy, drag you out about there. Yeah, how's that looking? I think that's looking pretty much good. Alright. So, yeah, too many sections in there, doesn't really matter. So, TS Smooth Toggle. Let's have a look if we're happy with that. Are we happy with that? That's a little bit over my finger size. It's okay, we'll trim that down in a minute. Okay, so that's essentially going to be that shape for me. Now, what I need to do in my side view is I want to be dumping all these internal faces here. I want to mirror this over. I'm going to join them up and then apply, start applying symmetry. All right. So I'm going to grab face mode. I'm going to grab all the faces on this side here and I'm going to dump them. All right. Then I'm going to go to verts mode and I'm going to grab those. Oh, shucks. Not that easy. Let's grab that edge loop, edge loop, grab the edge loop, grab the edge loop. Ay, 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 ay. Sometimes these selections can be a pain in the butt. Okay, let's have a look at what I've got there. And you and let go of you and you and you and you and you. Is that right? Am I too high on this side? I'm too high on that side. Okay, I've got to grab you. And you and you. Alright, so. Let's turn on the move manipulator. You just want to pull these back far enough. Don't worry, it looks mucky now. It'll look better soon. We just want to move them back far enough so that when we weld them later, um, they're going to join up in the middle there. Alright, so let's grab this. Right up over there. Alright, now I've got to grab those edges again. Now, normally. It'll allow me to grab an edge loop, so I don't know if this is just... No, oh, there we go. Allowed me to grab it this time. And, yeah, and we want to let go of all the top stuff up there. So, control, let go of all you guys. And control, and let go of you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And the same thing over here. Okay, so these guys, where's our menu? Mm. So we want to weld these guys, where are they? Okay, then we want to do the same thing with this edge loop and this. Crying out loud, just grab the edge loop and the edge loop. Alright, once again, we want to let go of everything up the top there. And all of that. Okay, now I want to weld that all up. 
Okay, so that leaves us with this little guy with a little star point in there. Don't worry, we'll get into that later. Okay, so that gives you the crux of the shape that you're going to need for here. Um, we've gone into the finger size, so we're going to need to trim this away a little bit. Okay, um, let me move this out of the way. Sorry, I've got a really small amount of space to work with here for the video. Let's grab this edge. Grab it, grab it. Okay, so this grabbing the edge loop thing is starting to become a real pain in the ass now. Hello, just grab the edge loop for crying out loud. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to insert an edge. Um, until about that far, because we want the claws to remain round, but we need the bottom of the ring to be flat. So we're going to go insert an edge in right up next to it. I like to do it real close like that. That gives you that nice square corner. Um, and then we have to do the same on the other side. Now let's grab the, ah, I grabbed first time this time. I must remember to ask the guys on the splines forum what that's about. Um, and let go of you. And let go of you. Uh, uh. Alright, we want a TS insert an edge in there. I could have been doing this with um with symmetry, sorry. Okay, so where is my finger size curve in there? Where's my finger size curve? Is that it there? No, where are you? It's gone missing. Anyway, so you're going to be able to grab this curve and that curve and scale them outwards. So if you grab that edge loop and that edge loop. Okay, there we go. That's better. And Let's let go of all the stuff up the top there. Okay. So these guys, you just turn on your um, turn on your scale manipulator to get your finger size right again. Okay. And you probably want to nudge around a little bit on the bottom here. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I'll leave it up to you to figure out. Um, we're going to do a TS make uniform and it's going to put all this together anyway. Okay, so what we're wanting to do now is have a look at the curves that come through here because we're going to have one that goes through here. Let's just do a TS make uniform just to fix that up. Okay, and I think we need to work on, let's work on these curves. Let's get back in our side view. All right, so we've got one curve. Mm, what should I use? I'm going to use an arc. I'm going to go from, say, there. Oh, that worked out spectacularly unwell for me. All right, I'm going to use an interp curve again. I like the good old interp curve. Mm. Remembering that, trying to be too pedantic about your about your size, yeah, it's going to do you no good because when you tear pipe, have a look what happens to it. It all goes winky wonky. All right, so this guy, we're going to turn on set of points and let's. I think I could probably rebuild that down to five points quite happily. Yeah, let's turn on set of points and poke and prod it till we get what we need. That's pretty good. Okay, so <coughs> with this guy, I can tell you that the edge over here is to come over something like this. The top end needs to come over to the edge of the stone like so. Mm. Curses having small screen space. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got going on. Yeah, that's coming out to there. I think that probably even could stand coming out a little bit further. 
Mm. Let's take you, make you come out a bit like that. Mm. Grab that in between guy, where were you? Control Alt and pull you out just so we get a nice shape going on there. Thank you. Could come out a little bit more too. So once again, this is going to depend on your own setter, how high you need your claws, whatever the story is going to be. Um, so, TS pipe, I'm going to go. Hmm, nah. Okay. So let's have a look at that. In our shaded viewport. It's looking it's looking pretty much like what we need. Now you need to remember that you need a crossover section, okay? So this curve, now that we're done with it, I'm going to mirror over F4 to the other side. And then that curve, we're going to turn on a set of points. And just grab the middle one and drag it out a bit so that the crossover is more crossover is more prominent. Okay. So TS pipe we're gonna to save to the same. 0.66, yeah, okay, preview app books is smooth, let's go. Alright, so that's the two outer claws going there. And you've got that nice crossover thing happening. Now I can tell that I'm going to need to pull these curves both in a little bit on the inside there. This is a problem. All right, my bad. Like I said, I do these videos dirty, so shift and shift and switch on the edit points. So these interior sections here, you and you need to come in faster. Okay. You guys can stand coming in a bit more too because they're going to blend into one claw on the outside eventually. Alright, so TS pipe and go and TS pipe and go. Alright, so those are the crossover sections. Wow, my claws need to come in on the top there. Why didn't somebody stop me? Go on, I'm having too much fun. Um, Alright, so those top sections there can stand coming in a bit. Okay, now final. All right, and then of course these guys you can just grab and mirror or rotate. Up to you, whatever you want to do with your um. Whatever you want to do with your shape when you're done. Um. So really, right now what we need to do is just get the little toruses underneath there. Very, very easy enough. So I'm going to just do a, I'm going to do a TS Taurus. Let's find our point in there, and let's, mm, let's bring you about there. Let's bring you about there. Okay. Let's move you up. Mm, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's scale that sucker a little bit in the up direction. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop into it and insert an edge right about here somewhere to harden it so I can bring out that nice sort of hard finish. So I'm going to grab an edge loop if I can, and the assumption is it's going to play the game with me. Uh, well, like I said, assumption. Alright, insert an edge somewhere around about here. All right then, scale that edge and its mate. <sighs> Assuming I can grab its mate, let's just work my way around. This is a, if anybody's watching this video, you've got an easier way to make the, the edge loop thing work properly, please let me know. Okay, so we want to bring that probably out a little bit more. And then the jewelers out there that are watching this video will understand what I'm doing. I'm not only creating a harder edge on the outside, I'm also creating a seat for the diamond to sit on. Okay, so I'm going to grab that edge ring. <sighs> oh, for crying out loud, just give me that edge loop. There we go. Let's touch that into the claws a bit. 
Probably a little bit more than that would be good, but that's good for now. All right, so I'm going to grab the whole thing and scale it a little bit. Mm, where's the scaler? Okay, so that's the one for the center stone done. All I'm going to do with that, it's the same as I did with the stone, I'm just going to grab that. And I'm going to rotate it around F4. From there with copy to the kilo of that one. Okay, take you scale from F4 and just bring it in till it's uh, around about the right size. Whoops. Mm. Let's move you in there. Does that look right? Or am I seeing too much metal? Whoa, way too much metal. Alright, so... This is dirty, guys. Just bear with me. Okay. Mm, that looks about right. Whoa. Now I'm mixing and matching Rhino workflows with T-Spine's workflows here a little bit. So, love me, hate me, whatever. Okay, so that's the bezel for that stone, under bezel for that stone, under bezel for that one. So let's just mirror that over. Okay, so the last thing left to do with this job now really is that shank's a bit heavy over there. So I'm going to try and grab an edge loop and just bring that in a bit. Um, so the edge loop we're after is this one. Get out of my way, Stuart Curve. I hope nobody in the video heard that. Um, Alright, I want edge loops. I want you. And I want you. There we go. <sighs> Alright. Now I also need that one in there. Ah, fantastic. So I'm going to let go of probably all the top ones here. The thickness is right, so I'm going to let go of all of them till about there. Then the rest, I'm going to scale 2D from F4. Just bring the thickness of my shank in a bit like that. All right, so let's pull you. Let's pull you out. Let's pull you out. Wow, that is probably the muckiest modeling I've ever done. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to pull you out. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to do a make uniform and then I'm going to see if I can get it to do a uniform. Mm. Probably want to pull that in a bit there. Pull that out a bit there. Anyway, I'm not going to get too, too pedantic here on it. Mm. Nothing you can't fix with the file in about three seconds. Alright, so what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to try and mirror it. Now, every time I've tried this the last while, something to do with my new T splines goes a bit winky wonk. So, what I might actually do is hide all of this up the top here. Yeah? And just delete some faces. Now you're asking yourself, why the hell did I do all that work with those there? I, it's just my, the way that I spatially conceive stuff, I can't work with half of something and wonder what the other half is doing. So this over here, I'm going to tear symmetry. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Tear symmetry. T-spline, axial over F4 to there, and that joined them? Yes, it did. Okay, so now whatever I fix up over here should fix up on the other side too. 
Okay, I'm going to do a TS make uniform just for kicks. I kind of try to use this like a relax, like other sub D programs I've got. It doesn't really always work for me. Um, let's pull that down there. Pull that down there. I should need to do this, but anyway. Okay. So, work your way around until you get the shape you're after. Um, I'm known to be a little bit more pedantic than most, but um, look, do whatever floats your boat. Don't like that there. Now you ask yourself why you're worried about it. I don't know. If the topology doesn't look right, my head doesn't feel right. Okay, so we're back here. Let's show everything we dumped. Alright, so we've got the shank going, we've got the claws going, so all we need to do now is to pull this section out here. Now, how I did this was I actually pulled out this as an extrusion together and then I tilted them upwards. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I actually merged these and pulled something. I can't remember. I'm going to have to just do it on the fly again. Sorry, guys. Um, Ah, you know what I did? I did it differently last time. I actually bridged these two edges. I didn't merge them. So I had a third section that I could pull up. So let's see if I can work my way back from that balls up. Um, hmm, that's going to be an interesting one. Because I really need that one section in between. So, uh, let's grab a face. I wonder, okay, let's grab a face. Over there. And a face over there. And let's see if I can extrude that sucker. Mm, well, may actually work out. You never know. All right, so let's have a look what's going on here. Let's pull that up. No, I'm gonna have to extrude again. Up to about there. Okay, I'm wanting some width on this. So I'm going to grab you, and I'm going to try and apply some symmetry across this way too. Okay, so TS symmetry. Select T spline to apply symmetry axial. Discover. So let's grab. That's my axis. Going to work. Yep, worked. Now that'll every so often we want to crash you out. So use use at your discretion. So I'm going to grab this face here and this face here. And that one there, and the one in between, if I can get to it. Mm, am I going to get to it? No, I'm not going to get to it, so I'm going to have to hide this. Oops. Right, so, Ooh, what's going on there? Oh, golly goodness me. Alright. It's okay, it's not a train smash. It's got an edge mode. And you, and you, and you. Let's just pull you out like so. Alright. Okay, now we just need to fatten that up a little bit, so I'm going to grab faces. Grab you, and you, and you. <laughs> Goodness me. Alright, let's pull you out like that. Okay, now I need to check my shape, so let's show everything we've got. Mm. Alright, so I've got to get in there now, and I've got to do a little bit of pushing and pulling. Happily, this is the one thing that T-Splines does really well. Okay, so I need to grab that edge there, and bring you backwards. I need to grab that edge there and bring that backwards and we're within a couple of minutes of having this done. The reason I'm saying that out loud is my loving patient wife is standing behind me wondering when I'm going to be done with something that was supposed to be a 10 minute project. Um, uh, if there's one thing you want even less than a crotchety boss is a crotchety wife. Okay, so I reckon that's about that's about it. So I've done this a little bit differently to the one that I posted previously um, in that 
one that I posted had three sections in the middle and I was able to extrude one curve. Just going to depend on what you need. Um, Alright, so I think... Whoa, that's actually... I've got the picture in the background there. So let me go with everything I can find here. Let's pull that down there. Is that so? That looks about right. Bring that in something like that. And then this is going to have to just come out to meet that a bit there. Okay, vertus mode. Let's grab those verts and bring them down. They're not happy to be up there. They're looking a bit squiggly. Okay, now let's have a look at what we've what we've done. I think you're yeah, probably most of the way there. Now I'm gonna switch off all of this and shade this up so we can have a look at what we've done. I'm gonna unlock our layer. Dump you and T-splines, options, hello, and I'm going to go to compatible, I'm going to go OK, give it a second to think, alright, wow, and every so often it'll do that to you, it'll invert, so I just run TS flip, OK, and the same over there. All right, so this is your this is your main shanks. Let's have a look at our let's look at our colorings, okay? So I'm going to go cell T splines. Wow, cell T splines, and we're going to go to middle, 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 middle. Where are you? Middle, 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 middle. Silver. Ah, oh, got some silver in there. No, I thought there was silver. Why do I think there was silver? Anyway, not important. Um, so that's your metallic structures there. Let's grab those. And we've got some jammy sort of things in there. No, have we? Oh, we had transparent. What have we got? Transparent, frozen, ice, whatever that is. Okay, it didn't work out as well as you would have hoped. But all right, so for what it's worth, it, it's a very clean surface. It's good to go. Oh, I grabbed the wrong stuff there as well. Turn them into. I see. Um, easy enough to grow, easy enough to work with. For the jewelers out there, after you've gone into um, after you've gone into NURBS mode, you just BD this at that point, um, and the whole thing just slips in from the top, clicks into place, and you solder up. So not that difficult to do. You get a nice hard edge to soft wire there with the insert edge at that point. Hope that's useful to someone. Joe, cheers mate. Bye.